Don't, what were you going to say, Matt? It's a good question. It is. But I'll have to wait because it's now episode 22, I think, of the Strength Hammer podcast. I was hoping you would do something funnier, Matt, when I hit start recording. <laughs> I at least that I think I think me showing early signs of Alzheimer's is hilarious. That's you know, <laughs> it's perfect. Um, yeah. So hi everybody. It's been a while since we've recorded. A lot has happened. I, the only excuse is my laziness, though. Uh, nothing else. So don't blame anyone else here. If you've noticed, uh, Matt with the Big M Power Hour has been very consistent. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Neil has a viable excuse making a, a, a two-day Triumph and Treachery tournament happening here in, what, two months? Oh, boy, don't say that. Yeah, I guess Soon, yeah. <laughs> a lot of terrain to paint. I'm just going to start every time we talk. Just, wow, only this many more weeks, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get a long time. <laughs> like, like Matt did getting ready for MCO. Oh, Dave's joining us now. I'm glad we, I'm glad we started this. Let's let's get him admitted here. There we go. Hey, hey. To hammer. first color of the night. Where are you from? Hey. Uh, I'm from Painland. Population me. From Painland? Yes. Yeah, you had to play soccer, though. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I am aching right now. All right. Well, so, we... yes, uh, Dave, just so you are aware, we are recording. Yes. <laughs> we started. Uh, I did I did tell Cole, since he's part of our little chat group, that he could join, too. Because this you is... Stay, you stay away from Cole, No. Right? This is... <laughs> listen, the Strength Hammer podcast Facebook messenger group, with a link goes in there, that's for everybody. He, All right? It's... it's We're not the Big M Power Hour. We don't... He's part of the Strength Hammer underground. <laughs> boy so is uh so is alex <laughs> our, our our friend alex um him and i did murph recently and i kind of recorded like a short maybe like 15 minutes before and after i'll probably try and throw at the end of this show it'll be audio only so if you're watching on youtube just pretend wait isn't that is this exercise? gonna be like uh, this is gonna be like adam sandler's sex or weightlifting is that what's going on right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all you're gonna hear is grunting. Why, why would you listen? No, no, it's 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 uh, so it's gonna be worse audio than ever because it was recorded on my phone, um, driving, both to and from the CrossFit box. So it was like, you're I, really selling this. That's... I listen. If you're here, you're here for a reason, and it's not Just for quality. Give you views to make you feel it, better about yourself. Is that... It's to hear road noise. I think no. that's what people are here for. Oh yeah, my car is not quiet on the road noise it, it lets it in and it we were driving on 70 it wasn't it's not going to be nice so the, to take the earphone i'll give a i'll give a nice pause and then you know like 10 15 second pause take your earphones out because it's going to probably get loud um and no i'm not going to clean up the audio i probably won't do more than like five seconds of listening to it to make sure it actually recorded right if it's if it's so bad that you can't actually hear us, then I will just cut it and we'll bring then Alex. I will we'll just play it at double volume. <laughs> yes. yes. Enhance. <laughs> yeah. Enhance enhance the road noise. So uh, yeah, so tonight um, we're gonna be talking. We're gonna do a quick run through of the Bellacore story. Uh, we are we are gonna complete the whole coverage of this Broken Realm series because we only got one more to go after Bellacore. Uh, it'll be kind of short and sweet. We'll probably talk about the AOS 3 Dominion stuff, uh, that new box set, and uh, just general chit-chat. So I, I guess our usual our usual cadence. Uh, Dave, uh, what's your fitness been lately? Because you just did some fitness. Ooh, yes, I have uh, started semi-regularly playing soccer uh, with a mix of old, out-of-shape people like myself. Uh, and young, really in shape people, which shame me. Um, <laughs> also, most of the old, out of shape people also shame me. Um, you gotta be the goalie. I'm... Go be the goalie. <laughs> and then, as I... soon as the go ball goes in, you blame your defense. That's what that's yeah. what oh, happens yeah. in Premier League. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, speaking of the Premier League, my my favorite team, Chelsea. Uh, to succeed uh, well enough, not only in the Premier League, but also uh, in that Champions League. I, so. well, I should just drop you from this chat right now uh, <laughs> as an Arsenal fan. I'm a, I'm a gunner. Um, 
but no, congrats to your team and their uh, bullshit ways. Um, hey, are we talking about dwarves? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you can just substitute them all for dwarves in like little little clan <laughs> battles. <laughs> there was a time where I was at work. They were um, a real blue collar place, and they were doing a a um, fantasy league. And they're like, "Hey, do you want in?" And I was like. Have dragons been drafted yet? And they said, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they walked away. That's the way to do it. Nice. All this, this, all this sports ball talk. <laughs> well, I mean, that's it, that's good. I mean, soccer would be a pretty intense sport, I imagine. I've never actually played it myself, but I imagine it's uh, a lot of good cardio. Yes. Uh, even for those of us like myself who run a little bit and then walk and wheeze most of the rest of the time, um, so I'm I'm at the uh, I've I've got several disadvantages here. One is I'm I'm old, mm -hmm. uh, having hit the big four zero. Uh, two is I'm out of shape. Uh, three is I'm old and out of shape. Hmm. Um, and number four is the last time I played organized soccer, I was either in fourth or fifth grade. So I've gone a good solid three decades of not playing like at all. Um, but, but so, uh, if, you, if this makes you feel any better, I was actually way back in the day. Um, I was recruited by some Division two schools to play soccer. I made states um, in high school, and I played at 38. I played one game, almost tore my quad, and then I haven't played since. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, I want to say, I mean, the the lack of hair on the top of your head makes you more aerodynamic. So at least there's less resistance when you're running. Uh, Try running uh, might be very generous here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you just you just wait for someone to like brush up against you and just flop. That's all you got to do. You got you got to draw the penalties out. That's your goal. Something uh, in Ohio air just gets rid of the hair. Yeah, yeah, it's it's in the water. Uh, Akron water is not the best. Mm. Um, <laughs> That's good. What about uh, uh? I'm sorry. Did you have any more? No, I, I just was going to trail off, and, and you prevented me from doing that. So oh, that's all. darn. Sorry. Tra <laughs> trailing off is free content. Uh, Neil, as you're sitting there, you're also looks like you're enjoying a fine whiskey. I have some uh, American honey right here. I am. I have some scotch right down there, some nice. Macallan. Well, while we're doing the anti-fitness thing and having alcohol, uh, what was your fitness lately? My fitness, um, the last two days, so I've been doing karate, right? And I've been doing that pretty consistently. In fact, uh, my, my cover is that I'm doing that with my kids, but I actually enjoy it more than them, I'm pretty sure. So, is it because uh, you beat them up? Because the... <laughs> exactly. you can win? <laughs> I, guess what I, I don't want my kid getting too good at this stuff. I still got to, you know. So uh, they were at the grandparents' house, and so my wife and I, who also does karate, um, we went to a grappling class. And I thought, grappling? That'll be really cool, right? Because you're just going to be rolling around on the ground and putting people in holds. That's what grappling is, right? Um, turns out what it actually is is you just do lunges across a very large mat over <laughs> and over <laughs> and over again to the point where my legs cramped so bad I had to stop before the last set of them. Oh, boy. Well, is it cheaper <laughs> than CrossFit? I've been for about two days since, but I am able to squat now. Okay. So I'm feeling really good about tomorrow. <laughs> is, is, it, are, is it cheaper than CrossFit is all i got to ask. It is cheaper than CrossFit, okay. but it is... Um, I mean, it's, it sounds like the same thing. As bad. <laughs> it, it is as bad. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Matt, how about yourself? What's uh, what's going on in your fitness world? Nothing much, right? We, uh, I have been uh, all hobby. Yep. Nope, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll get into that. Because uh, you have been extreme hobby mode. You've been the most hobbying out of all of us. Um, <laughs> But we'll wait for that next segment. So my fitness, I can't remember the last time we recorded. I know I think we just finished the CrossFit Open. I don't think I mentioned it, so I've had my appendix out. <laughs> uh, so that got into the way of... That doesn't uh, count as CrossFit, Chuck. That it does the, it doesn't. It got in the way of CrossFit. It's the last, it's the, like literally the last thing you have to do. <laughs> it's true. To join the cult of CrossFit. your appendix out lately. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I had my appendix out. Got back into full working shape. Is feeling good again. Did Murph, uh, as like I said, mention of Alex. That will hopefully be at the end. If not, we'll have him on the next episode, uh, or maybe like a mini episode. Uh, probably the next, because if I say mini, that means I'm doing extra work, which I'm not doing. Um, but yeah, did Murph. I did. Maybe I'll have him on my episode. You should. Talk about it. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah. Well, he crushed the workout. I uh, 
I did okay. I was just slightly over an hour. I wore the weight vest for the mile runs, but not the work, which, uh, and anyone listening, if you don't want Murph is, it's a really hard CrossFit workout that's done every year on Memorial Day by the CrossFit community. It's a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, mile run. Um, now you can kind of break that up as you want. I don't do that for whatever reason. So I actually do the mile run. Then I did a hundred pull-ups in a row, 200 push-ups. It's kind of like pull-ups and push-ups are my least favorite. So I just want to get them out of the way. So I'm just doing them all. Um, yeah, I think 61.56 was my time. So I want that under an hour with the weight vest, but we'll see. Just got to keep getting better, better and stronger. Um, and then, yeah, cool. as, what's it? Murph too. It's like when you're, so I did it years ago and I was not able to do 100 pull-ups so they will make sure that you are able to do 100 pull-ups they will put a, a green band around your foot and you will do those 100 pull-ups to yeah. the best of your ability yeah, so, yeah. I thought I've done it. so even if it sounds really bad they will make it you able to do it so yeah I mean <laughs> it's, re- it's it's no doubt reps were getting sloppy and eventually you got to the point where it's just doing singles because it's just a mental grind but um you know like, like you said like I did 100 pull-ups like no no assistance it was just 100 pull-ups and i was just like well a couple years ago that was not even something i'd even consider uh but yeah um that was good and then uh, neil as he alluded to um had a, another minor minor surgery um that's gonna keep me out of the gym for a week um <laughs> and uh keep the keep the bag of peas handy for the rest of the day but i'm actually i'm doing i'm doing okay surprisingly like i healed faster from appendectomy i'll heal even faster from this um <laughs> But yeah, uh, so fitness is going good. Aaron is shy <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, anyway, let's uh, transition to hobby. Uh, Matt, I think you're going to have to... First, first, I, I oh. do want I do want to point out one thing. You, you talked about doing 100 pull-ups like it's nothing. It is nothing I now. <laughs> I, could, I don't think I could do 100 pull-ups if the bar was literally at chin level and I was allowed to use my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... No, pull-ups were never my thing. I hey, wanted to establish that. Actually, surprisingly, the push-ups are the worst part of it for me. Pull-ups, yeah. it just you just rip your hands and it hurts and you move on with your life. Push-ups, it's like you eat my body just like says, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, well, too bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, uh, hobby, Matt. Yeah. Because you, so you have some uh, hobby plans. I'm sure you talked about it recently on the latest episode of Big M's Power Hour, which went up today at, as of recording. <laughs> this is what I was working on uh, previously. There you go. I'm sure. Yep. So, you know, very weird D and D care. Yeah, the but, the audio listeners uh, can see that that model. Well, guess what? <laughs> if you're watching this on audio, if you're watching this on audio, <laughs> that's a good trick. That's doing. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> get your ass off audio. Get on YouTube. Just yeah. stop. Like and subscribe. Just Smash that bell. Um, don't don't even do that. But yeah. So then this is what I've been working on. And here's when the magnets the other four out. weeks. Yeah. So this is um, forty wardens and 20 sentinels um i've gotten i've gotten all the orange on i've gotten well so i got the dresses done the armor done uh the only thing i need is the gold edge trimming on all of them and the weapon Mm -hmm. um stalling a little bit just because i've gotten to the point where the gold is taking me i've gotten it down to a half hour per model Uh, (laughs) i mean that's that's good for where you were at yeah it's, it's a beautiful Lumina scheme. It's 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 one of my favorites. Yeah, I really like it. I'll be really happy when it's done. Um, only to realize that then I have to start on the mountain temple. <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, like I said, so these so uh, as of time of recording, uh, this army was supposed to be done for ACO. That did not happen. ACO is next Friday again as of time of recording. Uh, so. Sons. Yep. Good. Old, I mean, that's a good backup plan. It's easy. You get to have fun. This is. This is. This will be the. Is this the? Yeah. This is the first major tournament coming back. So. Well, also. So like I said, on top of that, it's in. Um, it's in New Jersey. They still have their mask mandates on, so it's going to be the mask during the whole tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, I have yet to find a way to wear mask and glasses, so I basically. <laughs> I won't be able to like sit there and read the rules. So I needed an army that I already just have everything memorized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. It'll be, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to. Um, uh, I assume it'll probably be on the Big M's Power Hour because that's when the re- that's where the real content seems to go. 
uh, assume because you're going with Cole. Assume you guys will do your full coverage on your show next month. Probably. Yeah. Unless I get uh, inspired to do something else. Start your. Are you starting your own channel? Is this the end of the Strength Hammer News Network, which only existed because you said it? <laughs> but again, listen. It doesn't. It nowhere does does my channel say Strength Hammer Network. Strength Hammer Underground. Strength Hammer Underground. <laughs> yeah. Strength Hammer. You, you nixed it, so I was like, no problem. Bob. Strength <laughs> Hammer <laughs> After Dark. <laughs> we hammer. We don't give a shit. Hey, you know what? That's what. Whenever uh, Neil and Dave start their own show, they could do Strength Hammer After Dark. Actually, um, so this is all Matt's idea, but I'm going to throw it out there and support it with my full authority as the um, whatever the hell I am. Um, so Matt has the Big Empower Hour. I have this show. And then uh, if we had a third show, we could we could put out some serious content, like almost weekly. So we need we need the Ohio boys to do 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 the strength hammer after dark. It can be about anything you want, literally anything. So many ideas in my head right now for strength hammer after dark, but I'm gonna keep them in my head for now. Yeah, save them. Don't give marinate. away that content. <laughs> I just, feel like that's just 100% slanesh 24/7, right? Just, yeah. just sweaty old guys talking about things. <laughs> With, and like, and please, slightly please invite someone else to be the other sweaty old guy. Now. Slightly adjacent it to to Warhammer Age of Sigmar as loosely as possible. <laughs> like, honestly, it could even just be you guys just talking about whatever random bullshit you want while you're painting models together. Like, that would still, I, I would it, like, it's it's going to get to the point where, like, I, I saw Matt's putting a lot of effort into the Big M's Power Hour for sure. Like, I I, I uploaded it today, and I'm like probably gonna listen to it tomorrow <laughs> even though it's like the type of content it's that's a really good episode yeah, yeah, like, like, like i hate to pat myself on the back but it's actually good. <laughs> oh speak of the devil we have we have a emergency guest coming in second caller of the night cole cole's joined the... i damn it cole <laughs> see i told Tell you where you're from and what you're wearing here i listen i i told i was telling matt that if that link goes in the Strength Hammer chat, anyone in that chat can join. We're not the Big M's Power Hour. We're not some secret club. And listen, and I said Cole is Strength Hammer Underground only. There's no way he's going to join like a little prostitute into this show. He's but, in. Oh, he's <laughs> in. I didn't even realize you guys are in the middle of recording, aren't you? We yeah. are, but you're staying. You're stuck here. As long as you can. As long as you can. Um, the best beard in Warhammer. Of course he's staying. Absolutely. Oh, thanks, thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> We were all painting shit. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can paint. I can't multitask like that, so. I just finished. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, well, I I can't paint because I make a ton of noise with my water. <laughs> you do, you do. It's, it's the noisiest painter. It's aggressive. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put a quick pause on the hobby to get caught up here. Cole, what have you been doing for your fitness lately? Uh, for fitness lately, I have uh, started to. Well, I've been walking, and now I've added a run to it. I walk for one mile and run for one mile after work each day. That's awesome. And I am on a calorie count of 2,200 calories a day. Are you using the MyFitnessPal? Yes, I am. Heck after yeah. I talked with you about it. So Nice. That's what I'm doing. Awesome. I'm lose like 40 pounds, so we'll see how it goes. Hey, a pound a week, you'll get there. Don't worry. And you're going to go up and down. Just... Trust the yeah. process. Give it time. Uh, okay. All right. Caught up on fitness. We did Matt's hobby. Uh, Dave, what's what's your hobby been? I have actually been hobbying a little bit lately, mm -hmm. which is a huge change. Uh, so right now my basement is in disarray because we're getting it waterproofed. And, you had asbestos uh, taking out? Yes. Yep. Asbestos <laughs> getting taken out. That was, uh, that was something. Um, didn't take nearly as long as I expected, but uh, we're making up for that with the waterproofing. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're getting carpet put down there eventually, and, and so I'll have a actually nice, like, civilized hobby area. But for now, I get to hobby on my desk that's amongst all kinds of crap here in the den. But I have been painting my chimera. Nice. I, Yay. You know, I... I... I remember it's way not going to show up well here, but that's fine. Put put on your Twitter day; that'll be linked below. Um, 
Man, I, I be the lonely thing on my Twitter. I remember when the White Dwarf came out with Storm and Magic, and I saw the cockatrice for the first time. I've never picked up that model, but like as a fresh young hobbyist, I saw that thing and I was like, "That's an amazing model." And yet, I've never bought one still. But like, yeah, I, I love that model. Yeah, there's a uh, there's an army list of all cockatrices uh, flying around. Yeah, right cock now, cock cock cockatrices, chimeras. Yeah, like just all of those are just like, oh, man, it's such a cool like. Yeah, I'm I'm. I, I, I probably still won't, it's, unless I can make it like a witch elf. But anyway, uh, Neil, what's your hobby, Ben? Neil, what, what, been what army is that under? What's that? Cockatrice? What army is that? Is it Slaves yeah. of Darkness now? It's, uh, beasts of Chaos? Maybe? Where's the Beasts? I think it's Beasts. That's one of those. But my hobby has been, I uh, finished up that army for that friend of mine, uh, his corn army, so I just did all of his uh, lava bases. Um, outside of that, I have, uh, with the help of... of Three of you lovely people. Um, actually, I will say five or four of you lovely, lovely people because you, uh, Cole, contributed as well by putting your narrative into that book. So um, we have the uh, Ren 4 Battle Across the Realms book is being published right now outside of one A that should have been an E at the back. It's <laughs> the only error I know of at the moment. I'm sure I will find at least 5,000 more. Um, but I'm probably going to fix that before all the rest of the books get shipped. But. Um, the first book is shipped and it is on its way to my house right now so that's great take a look at it hopefully it's it's printed well and what that is is it's just the rules for our system and then uh 32 different uh one to two page narratives all through this all in all i think it's 84 pages uh, like it's got some hardbacks got some softbacks and so most people are getting the softbacks um all you lovely people are getting the hardbacks so. no that's i'm gonna i'm gonna try to get everyone to sign their narrative page in mine that'd be awesome i think it'd be pretty cool idea. yeah it's, like a, it's a yearbook <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i like that's it great. no that's incredible mm -hmm. um yeah i i can't wait for that event because that'll be my first two-day event mm -hmm. since whatever the last one was nova a couple years ago yeah ohio, <laughs> yeah. ohio is uh, sans masks right now we're doing pretty good over here so i'm anticipating that uh into july i would it should be no masks for the uh, tournament. So. Well, unless you want to wear one. Me, case, yeah, so power to. me and Cole are going to bring over our uh, our Western PA rural ways and do what we want anyway. Shoot off, <laughs> shoot off guns and fireworks in that building. Be the hicks Wild card. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, what's uh, what's your hobby right now? My hobby right now is my neck deep can. I'm getting ready for Atlantic City Open. That's great. Could you also turn up your mic just a little bit? Might be able to. Okay, if you can. Uh, I'll just talk a little louder for the moment. That's fine too. So. You're just you're just slightly soft, and I don't want anyone else yeah, to miss your sultry tones. Just gotta move. Thank move you. that dial up. <laughs> yeah. It's you know it's great whenever you're only managing you and somebody else, Matt. But like you know I'm managing all these people. I got this background here. I got MS Paint ready to go for our Bellacor review. Uh, but first, my hobby. Um, Uh, Daughters of Cain. Like, I, I can't remember what's the last thing I did. I'm painting witch elves right now. <laughs> if you didn't expect that, I'm floored. Yeah, this I mean, unbelievable. And after that, I have 20 more sisters of slaughter. And then after that, finally, I'll, I'll, I'll probably do some stormcast from the Dominion box set. I'll find somewhere to offload the cruel boys. The models, models just doesn't do it for me. I think they're great, but they just don't do it for me. Um, and then I'm starting my second dock army. So yeah, just get used to that. And if you're not used to that and you're on this channel, I don't know where the hell you found us, but like I paint Daughter's Cane all the time. <laughs> just... Every time every time Chuck says painting Daughter's of Cane, we need like a breaking news thing that just flashed on uh, <laughs> Hey, if someone wants to take over editing this show and recording it and like it make me seem like the host but you do all the work, that's that's the dream right there. I think Neil just Dude. volunteered. Uh, that's what no, I heard. Sir. No sir. We'll just brand it as uh, Strength Hammer After Dark, and then, then you have to make your own show again, Chuck. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Steal my Strength show. Strength Hammer After Dark, adding sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a mixing board, I would. Uh, I could do a mixing board through o OBS, which is what I use, but the jokes would really miss because only I would hear that sound. You guys wouldn't. <laughs> like, in the audience, obviously, but... Uh, yeah, so anyway, tonight... Uh, for those who are able to view us on YouTube, you know we did a lovely Marathi review, which I have Marathi's image up here on screen. And then we also did Teclas. I got Teclas's amazing 
amazing portrait right here as well. We'll close this one. Now we got Bellacor. This fucking excuse for a guy. Ugh, he had a story. He stole it from Alarial. I'm convinced. <laughs> we should have had a, a Broken Realms Alarial. Who cares about Bellacor? So, uh, out of all of us, I know not everyone has had a chance to read Bellacor yet. It, no, no, not calling shade here, just being open with it. So, Matt, have you had a chance to read Bellacor yet? No. Dave? Actually, yes. Neil? Yes. Cole? No. Man, big empower yeah. hour, letting us down again. Big empower hour. Those win at all yeah. cost fools. Hey, you want to talk about Stormcast? I mean, we can do that. I'm ready. I got a PowerPoint presentation to deal. <laughs> Just do it in the background, like on mute. <laughs> Uh, I and I have, uh, and if you actually, if you'd like to get like an in-depth review of the lore, um, I was actually on the Garage Hammer podcast for this a while back. We went to full details on it. Two Plus Tough always does great lore coverage. Um, and if you're looking at for rules in depth, uh, obviously Warhammer Weekly and Face Hammer are two of my favorites. Um, do you guys have any shout-outs for any like coverage you like for these types of things that are going to go more in depth than we will? Because we just kind of hang out and chat. Because that's kind of what I want this podcast to be. I mean, you, me personally, my go-to is, is uh, good old Doug on 2 Plus Tough. Guy's a miracle worker. He is. He is. I'm a, I'm a Garage Hammer, Warhammer Weekly, and Face Hammer. Face Hammer's hilarious to me when I listen to it. It's, um, you know, they, they talk so much uh, of the nitty-gritty, and I listen to the whole thing. I listen very intently, and then when the episode ends, it's just like, it's gone. <laughs> 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 I just... I don't know how that happens. Maybe it's just a very low IQ, but uh, <laughs> it just seems to be gone. Oh, oh so you know what? There's I, there's one channel that, that I know we're allowed to dunk on here, uh, so I'm going to dunk on them. So I haven't watched them for a while, you know, just because of the flack they got, but they had, like, a while ago they had the video of, like, we're going to try and you know, do better and everything, and of course I'm talking about mini wargaming. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they had a video that was, like, the rejected... Um, Soul Blight versus Sons of Bahama. And I'm okay. Like, 30 minutes? Okay, you can get my attention. They literally screwed it up in the in the list making. Wait, did they screw up the list making for Sons of Bahama? Yes. There's he literally took, only two ways to build that army and they screwed it up. <laughs> he took uh, all three man crushers in a single unit. Wow. So then... Wow. He made a clutch turn one nine inch charge with all three man crushers instead of just one like he should have. Huh. Mini war game. And then of course and then of course there's the um, absolute bottom of the barrel filth that you just can't like you know like whenever you have like a pan that's just been around too long, there's just shit at the bottom you can't get off. <laughs> well that is commenting in Mini Wargaming's channel videos about oh. like still bitching about the double turn and it's like no he's a bad player <laughs> <laughs> yeah come on come on mini wargaming you're better than that we think no, like we think we, we believe we no, hope no we dream not there i'm trying to be positive on this one listen listen i you know that i have been like no man this would be cool it's gonna be great we, we should like maybe see if we can go out there sometime like no i'm done done <laughs> it's it's not that hard their invite to you is actually in the mail as we speak, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they still use snail mail for some yeah. reason. <laughs> They're trying to fax it to me. That's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. from, from what it sounds like, they uh, sent it to the wrong address anyway, so Matt will never see it. Right. <laughs> so I, I would have one other entry for lore-related podcasts. I've, I've uh, tended to really enjoy the Mortal Realms and their mm, yes. uh, lore. Uh, although I must say it's been a while since I've... Uh, gotten around to, to following through on that but they've always been enjoyable they have i mean if we really want to get into like podcast reviews like i'm i, I we we could make that the show like i'm not i'll still name this bellicore review and we'll, we'll do five <laughs> minutes um <laughs> no, actually i've been listening to a ton of like fitness and different podcasts lately um but yeah uh do you guys want to get into that because i do i'm ready i'm i could go i'm out i'm out i'm done i did all my reviews Okay. All I, right. I listen Mini to Garage Hammer and Mortal Mortal Realms, and I actually still listen to this show. <laughs> Even when you're on it. 
Yeah, that's I need that little ego thing. stroke, right? Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> you know, it may, it may, yeah. it may mean... I don't know how you can do that, but the second conversation twice. Yeah. I, it's it's really great, and then I, I keep hearing this one jerk that, like, has terrible ideas yeah i'm sorry i, I have to i no, have to be on this ideas. show oh okay <laughs> <laughs> actually dave could you do this for me uh -oh. when you re-listen to this show can you re-listen to it with a headset on and record it i want i want to record i want to put up a show that's your commentary of this show with you on it <laughs> director's cut yeah frank that hammer could... after dark <laughs> director's cut <laughs> well, it's like it's like the same thing like one day i want to do a show where we watch warhammer weekly live together and just critique and chat about it or chat over it while it's happening. <laughs> well, if we can get Vince to watch one of our shows and then post that as his show, and then we can Vin do that for the show of him watching us. Vince is a very <laughs> Vince is an intelligent, smart man, and he does not have time for the shenanigans of our content. <laughs> that's, that's some Inception level shit, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then for Power Hour, I can then review that episode. <laughs> <laughs> And as always, if you have any hate comments, leave them on the latest AOS Coaches Show comments section. Uh, <laughs> no context needed. He knows. And if he doesn't, he, also, he doesn't. hate comments apparently have a great home with mini wargaming. So that's <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. honestly, any yeah, that, any that, Warhammer stream. Like I, I don't know. We like I watched the Dominion one, and like I turned on chat for a second. Oh, I'm like, are you guys like rookie mistake? Like what the hell is this like? <laughs> It's just bad. Like these people, yeah. one they have bad, they have bad hot takes, and two they're just a bunch of a assholes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually covered that in Power Hour as well. So oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I, th I think the trick in the future, Chuck, is to actually just watch it through uh, the Warhammer community website, because I don't even know if you can see the chat through that. Mm. Uh, well, so I, that I usually you're, you're not even burdened. With I it. usually turn it off. I just turn it on just to see. I expected filth and yeah like it was just like and I, they I, did I, not disappoint yeah well it's yeah, apparently especially if, even in real life play uh. <laughs> unless unless you turn on during a warhammer 40k stream uh and my god Ooh. that is it no, no, yeah that there's that 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 game draws out some real bad people on this one you have the anonymity of internet chuckle fucks come out Anyway, what, speaking, of, speaking of chuckle fucks, ch chuckle fucks, chuckle fucks, <laughs> Bellacore. Easy for you to say. Yeah, easy. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to bring up MS Paint here on the side. You can still see our, all of our beautiful, well, beautiful faces. going on. <laughs> yeah, so um, Berkram's Bellacore. So, uh, Dave, do you want to kind of walk us through, like, kind of like the opening act? Because it doesn't actually start with Bellacore, because who cares about Bellacore? Who cares? The best part is mm -hmm. I think the you're... dinosaurs. The <laughs> dinosaurs show up. Dinosaurs. Right. We... Right, and if and by the way, if you're on audio right now, I highly suggest you do watch the show. I'm gonna be MS Paint live drawing the story as we go. Oh boy, oh boy. So, uh, so, uh, I, so, Dave, I need some detailed. Uh, Dave, I'm actually gonna rely on you, and, and as well as Neil, to kind of like lead the conversation during this, as I perform the <laughs> highest level of art I am capable of. You uh, are going to regret this to no end. Yes, <laughs> Matt, Matt, and Cole. I expect you to throw in random shenanigans that actually didn't happen. Just what you think would happen, or be fun to add and see me draw. Um, I got you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no problem. I think I think the best part is uh, uh, with my memory of having read this stuff, mm -hmm. and I just read it like last week. Uh, they're going to be more accurate than I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's All fine. Right. So uh, I'm guessing I'm going to start with the color green because we're, we're talking Seraphon, right? And, and that's green somehow? What okay, blue, what color do you want these lizards to be? Oh, I got blue. them all kinds of colors. All right, well. Uh, but, but, I mean, we start with croak, really, so so it should be uh, it's a brown, a dusty brown. Yeah. Um, Whatever color a frog in a microwave would be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the answer is you can't see it because it's... <laughs> Messed up the, the front of the microwave. Uh, so the uh, the first section here is the realm gates under threat. Uh, you know, Nagash had done all his shenanigans with the, the necroquake and all that. All the realm gates. They're just all under threat. All That's of them. just how okay. it is. Um, Croak is an all realm gate. All right. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's who he is. Uh, uh, and on. there's this uh, eater of tomes, the the gaunt summoner that's uh, I believe out in the uh, eight points. 
um, and uh, he's got his little silver tower, you know, so he's clearly just sitting there playing old Age of Sigmar board games. Um, and uh, and Croak has it in his head that, uh, you know, the old one's plan is, let's take that thing out. Let's start knocking down some silver towers. Uh, so <laughs> they get out there and, uh, you know, the, there's all kinds of shenanigans going on at the eight points and all that. and. And there's some nonsense with uh, Stormcast and who cares about them. Uh, but then, then the Seraphon come in and say, hey, all these Chaos guys, they, they kind of suck. Like, you know, all those other factions, you've got your Stormcast, you've got your cities, you've got all that. They're order with a little O. Uh, Seraphon, they're order with a capital O. Like, they're, they're really... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're driving the bus here and so they get out there and they say that silver tower that's that's gotta go and, and honestly it was it was a lot of fun reading about uh, a seraphon battle and and they've mm -hmm. they've got these carnosaurs riding out there they've got uh bastilodons blasting left and right with their solar engines as they do and of course they're facing chaos demons so you know extra damage i can jump in for a second mm -hmm. too and no. So they go in, they go in through the Genesis Gate, where the Stormcast mm. are fighting a battle against Nurgle, trying to hold this gate, trying to open this gate. Stormcast are like, oh, which we're which staying. which Stormcast were they by the way? Because that's that's kind of important. Well, they were the the Hollowed Knights. So we're talking about Gardas and uh, and the rest of his crew, uh, um, Lord uh, Castle really? Grim and his awesome Griffin. Silver the white one. Those are the silver, silver ones. Silver. Silver and blue. We're gonna draw the, the, the only the faithful crew. We got the and, Chad uh, Stormcasts here at the bottom. But they're dying in droves. Nurgle is 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 whooping their butt. They're trying to like ten abs um, going on here. Take that Genesis gate that Alariel took, and um, and the Seraphon just go, <laughs> and they they just march right on by. They're like, nah, now nah, we're cool, bro. We're gonna, we got other things to do. <laughs> hey. Speaking of Valerial, what do we? Uh, I know it's a side <laughs> rack, but what do? We, what's uh, what's going on with that uh, war scroll, huh? Or is that in Kragnos? That's Kragnos. That's Kragnos. That's Kragnos. Kragnos. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Wait. We'll wait a couple weeks for that one. All right. So Come yeah. On, I, so I got. Um... I don't know, man. I haven't get the book yet. <laughs> right, anyway, continue with the story. Uh, so they they go all out and, and uh, they the, the battles going back and forth and and uh, cats and dogs living together and all that uh, <laughs> and it's it's uh, you know it's it's going bad there's there's a lot of seraphon just dying left and right uh, but they they were able to take out this uh, tower ultimately. Yeah. Before uh, no, before they, before they take it out, so it's in the eight points. The tower, kind of like, kind of like rockets out, you know, countdown, ten, you know, <laughs> like the space shuttle <laughs> just pew, out of there. Oh wait, wait. And when that happens, there's just like a like a nuclear detonation, and all the seraphon that were there, gone. Um, but Crocus, yeah, see, I didn't want to talk about that. That was traumatic for me. I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. Crocus has seen this. The silver tower goes boo. Out to uh, uh, where are we at Shimon, and um, yeah, I, I love how we had like Michael Jackson. Come on, do it right. <laughs> Rome, Rome metal, right? Yeah. And but but Croak is foreseeing exactly where it's going to end up, and so some. Uh, what, what's the skink's name, Chuck? Help me out with this guy. I don't know. I am skink in Shimon. He's I... leading like a thunderquake star host. That that's oh, basically man. name skink. You got you yeah, got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad he's gone. Icto. But Icto. Um, yeah, so so they, they commence, uh, they resume the attack, I guess, in, in a new realm. So after, they, after they, after they, them. well, after they pew pew it down, right? Hold mm -hmm. on. I got, I got, I have Croak here. He's a fire in his laser. Well, I'm All pretty right. sure it was the, it was the, uh, well, no, it was, it was Croak and his. Skink. It, no, it was just the skink javelin. Oh, just oh yeah, okay. It was yeah, that's right. Just skink javelins and blowguns. That's yep. all it was. It wasn't the giant laser. <laughs> all right, so we so we uh. Yeah, so we have the silver tower crash. Whoops, no, need my pencil here. Silver tower crash. I'm just gonna draw this rubble on the ground. 
Oh, and and there's talk of of uh, flamers and pink horrors and all this stuff and big explosion. So I, I want to see those drawn up there too. Uh, hold on, I'm drawing a giant dinosaur right now attacking the silver tower. You need you want pink horrors and stuff. Oh yeah, Draw. pink horrors, flamers, <laughs> do it right. I'm getting them. I'm getting them. And un undoubtedly, Chuck, many of the pink horrors died and therefore became blue horrors. Right. So you got to have those in there. I'm drawing <laughs> twice as many blue horrors and six and, of them. Uh, <laughs> and then there's lots of brimstone horrors popping up, too. I mean. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I got to. Actually, brimstone horrors is my favorite part of this entire story, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not here yet. And this is. Uh, they they no, do play a specific yeah. role. And this is. Uh, tome eater with this tome that he's eating right there and he's on fire because uh what, what's the lizard men do here all right a seraphon so, yeah so uh first of all uh ikto did uh did bite the big one in this uh mm. um and so you know it happens uh that's just and, and how it goes did we did we cover the fact that a giant swath of, sh of shaman where this thing landed detonated did we cover that like people like well, miles away like were looking at it and got yeah. blinded like Everyone some city was just gone and... <laughs> some city was just like going about its day and all of a sudden it's just like vaporized but it I love also it when, when they say stuff like this by the way because like <laughs> it's just like people from like hundreds of miles are now blind and deaf it's just like who's <laughs> who's left in these realms <laughs> <laughs> like how do they get by <laughs> everybody's blind and deaf what are we what are we doing here like you know i'm, I'm fine <laughs> well, that means they just have careers as referees ahead of them. So. <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, but uh, the other side effect of this uh, silver tower exploding is um, the the magic of the silver tower was tied in with the um, arcane constructs and primordial pathways and all this stuff, and a bunch of realm gates just start exploding all over the place in multiple realms just all over the place uh now this was part of what croak foresaw and he was like you know what the price of losing a bunch of realm gates and having these realm gates explode is worth it to take out the silver tower that's that's the great plan from the old ones he's he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. um, yeah unfortunately not mine. <laughs> yeah, we got we got a realm, my back, yeah. We got a tiny realm gate here. It says boom next to it. It's got a sad face because it's exploding. You know what's gonna happen is all the realm gates are gonna explode eventually, except for one. There's gonna be one realm gate left, and that's gonna be the realm gate for the old world that eventually blows up. We're just gonna come for a full circle. <laughs> We're coming all the way around. There we go. Well, well <laughs> Neil, now, really... don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, first, there's gonna be a, a book released about uh, Archeon and the One Point. Um, <laughs> so. so actually there was a there was a Gotrek novel that there was a realm gate back to the old world, Gotrek destroyed it. Anyway. Doubling down on that, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, so let me clear the scene here. Uh, so what happens? And then Neil, I think I think you take over for the next page here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, for the Caradron, um, see this explosion, and um, they go to check it out. And so they got this brand new uh, <laughs> sparkly uh, um, frigate. I don't know why it's got to be a frigate. You know, I feel like it needs to be an ironclad, but it's uh, it's the fastest uh, frigate in the uh, in the fleet, and um, they are flying out to check this thing out. And so they're out to check this out, and they bring up a new character that's on the boat, and he's just this general Arcanaut, but he's he's this old guy, this old grizzled Arcanaut that's been there forever, and uh, for some reason um, he just kind of keeps popping up and keeps giving advice to the. Uh, um, I think he's an Undern Master. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Undern Master. Um, as they're on their way, right? And so they kind of they kind of scout this out, see that something's wrong, and they fly back to report what's going on. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> Bellacor is making a dash for um, the Realm Gate in uh, I'm forgetting the name of the city, Dave. Uh, which one is it? It's the one that's controlled by the um, Celestial Vindicators. 
Oh yeah, that's. Oh wait, I, I got I, I, I gotta drop Bellacor. I gotta drop Bellacor here. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> uh, what is that? That's not the uh, what realm. It's metal. Vindicarum. Uh, Vindicarum. Vindicarum. There we go. That's it. So that is that is <laughs> Vindicators. Celestial Vindicators. How can I forget yeah. that? <laughs> um, so <laughs> wait now. Um, so anyway, so. Um, so Velikor starts making a beeline to to the city. He's going to the goal is to destroy this Rome gate and, and utterly destroy this city. Um, now, in the meantime, we we flash back to the the, the realm of heavens, Azir, and uh, Gardas is back there after being killed and reforged. Mm -hmm. um, I believe uh, so he did, he did not make it after the Seraphon uh, pieced out. And, uh, and of course, so he, but he, they, uh, he did hold the gate though. They, he, he did. He held the gate for the uh, for the uh, stormcast from Broken Realms Marathi, who went to go help with the Varanite issue come back. So, yep. Mm -hmm. And of but course, on this time, whenever he uh, whenever he was reforged, he forgot what lemonade tastes like. So, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> that's the least of his words at that point. He, <laughs> he is forgot all of second off. grade. <laughs> he, he is, he's pretty mad, and he decides that he's going to go have um, go to this this area of Azir where you know if you talk about the seraphon are <clears throat> kind of from azir as well they're floating around their spaceships in the heavens so he goes to the spot and basically to commune with them and uh, he stays there for a number of days and finally it's like beam me up scotty Pew! he goes flying out and who's there but lord croak uh and lord croak is uh, basically gives him a vision of what's going to happen at vindicarum um, no no, no. Um, he gives he kinda... him a vision of a lot more death and destruction first Correct, and, and that pisses off Gardas. Gardas is displeased with this vision of death to, like, all these cities falling under the assault of chaos, and he's like, "Oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that," and then Croak is like, "Uh, uh, oh no, you didn't." <laughs> what I find interesting about this part is, so Croak has made this calculation um, that okay, you know, we want to kill these the Silver Tower. This is Bella course yep. plan all along is that these these towers actually and, do and, fall in true chaos and factor, Bellacor uh, made the the location of that tower um he was the cause of that secret being revealed to the seraphon in the first place mm -hmm. so so Bastard. croak thinks he's doing the right thing here and he's blowing up the silver tower and he's really just oh, he's doing the right thing shut whole, up neil whole whole plan right <laughs> and uh <laughs> you know they, they they make him out to be this omnipresent you know kind of entity and you know he's showing Gardas all these things but really as far as Bellacor's plan goes Croak kind of screwed up Croak kind of played right into his hands so he does give Gardas um, a vision of what's going on there and Gardas understands that if he takes his his troops there you know there's a there's a very good possibility that he's not coming out of there um, for whatever reason, he doesn't know exactly what's going on, but it's it's ominous. He knows that if they go, uh, this is going to be trouble, right? Um, so they, um, he leaves, and then we flash back to Vindicarum, and Vindicarum is getting um, is getting punched in in the throat <laughs> by, <laughs> by demons of all sorts. They've got greater demons. Everything's uh, it's it's chaos undivided. They're all going in there. There's no mortals really to speak of. It's all demons. It's blood letters, plague bearers, um, all types of horrors, uh, screamers, and they're all coming in there. And this, and the city is defending itself. And what I thought was kind of interesting is that the celestial vindicators could not care less about the humans <laughs> defending this city in a very, uh, I'm sure, 40k fashion. <laughs> they could not care at all about what's going on with with these human troops, right? Yeah, they're and willing to throw wave after wave of human troops. Just <laughs> the the, the final the citadel in the city is has basically enough space and troops for the stormcast and what the stormcast are doing, and no space to save any retreating humans. Uh, I believe <laughs> at one point they're basically like their job is to die in defense of of the city, right? So, um, but it is very cool how they've set up the defenses. The the whole realm gate has essentially like hell blasters and like cannons and all this different stuff set up all around the realm gate. Um, and this this giant tower um, has all of this stuff set up there too, and so they're putting up a fairly good defense against all this, um, against all odds. And so these, uh, but uh, Bellacor understands that you know you, you 
if you can get rid of this tower, you're going to take care of the primary line of defense. So this is where he sends in, um, it's like an exalted flamer. I don't remember his name. Um, Hero, he's on a chariot. He's flying in. He's sending in all these uh, horrors, basically. And they're, they're shooting these horrors. And, and of course, they're splitting and turning in. So And they're, they're getting it as many of them as they can and finally just this one little brimstone horror right he he makes his way into the citadel and i just i just picture this thing as happy as can be kind of <laughs> jumping <laughs> to his own doom because he knows if he can there is a, like a system that takes in, in this tower all the munitions up to the top to the kind of refill the cannons and the hell blasters and all this stuff and it's it's just taking ammunition up and down and so this thing kind of runs and just just dives <laughs> into it and kaboom, right? It's the one little spark. I just I mean, it's my favorite part of the whole book. It's, it's um, you really have to picture the Helm's Deep scene in uh, the two towers, um, and then just amplify exactly right. the explosion by a factor of several thousand. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's exactly right. And uh, um, yeah, so I, I just love it. To me, it. Uh, oh God, how can I? How can I, I guess the Helm's Deep is really what it covers it pretty well there, Dave. So. Anyway, so that blows up, um, and things are now looking very bad for for the defenders. Um, at which point, as the demons are kind of rushing in, people are being slaughtered left and right in the streets. They're still trying to hold out, but it's not going well. Um, boom, in come the Stormcast, right? And so the Stormcast come in, Gardas comes in, he sees what's going on. And I should actually preference this before this is happening, the Celestial Vindicators, who are defending the town too, um, there was a massive explosion out of the realm gate and through the this realm gate the the magic that kind of comes out of this is like a cloud almost like a storm and there's like chaos like tendrils and just weird kind of like uh stuff coming out of this cloud and every time a storm cast dies they're going up into this cloud and they're getting shredded and torn apart uh and we also miss dave the fact that um Bellicor has allied with um we, we passed over this whole thing. Lady yeah, Olander. You, you sure did. Lady Olander. Right? So yeah, you passed, passed over it. It wasn't in my back. Part. The flashback. Um, Bellacor <laughs> attacks Olander and goes into her city. It's all basically a ruse. And she's going in. She's attacking all these demons. She's killing all these demons. And he goes and he finds her bones. And by the time she gets back there, he's standing over her bones ready to, to destroy her bones. If that, he does that, she's done. Um and so basically holding her hostage uh, he tells her you know if you ally with me essentially i've got a way where you can feast on all the stormcast souls that have been escaping you and so they eventually come to a very precarious alliance uh, based on this because olander is not so happy with bellicor she has a feud with him and she's ready to uh, as soon as she possibly can reignite this but mm -hmm. for the time being um, she's going to uh, attack the Stormcasts. Now, an important aspect of this for, for the paint drawing aspect here is that she actually puts um, a an hourglass above Bellacor uh, and flips it so that the, the sand starts ticking down uh, and that bargain. Um, and then uh, at some point she meets back up with him and just flips it back over again and says no you, you did all right for the moment but uh, yeah, I, I feel like again. they could have done something a little cooler <laughs> like maybe like keep like in a, mind like a, this is david like i's rendition of this yeah i love this <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I remember hearing about that part and i'm like 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 an mmo like there's a timed event yeah. like why not put like like a band of like thorns around his wrist or something that slowly goes away? I don't know, man. There has to be. <laughs> nope you get you get the you get the buff above your head, uh, but uh, <laughs> just just to pick back up. So yeah, o Oleander's there and she's eating the Stormcast souls right now. I have uh, Sang Soon on screen uh, with the classic pointing at you. Your soul is mine. So. Uh... <laughs> so the, this this celestial vindicator, um, this entire storm host, is wiped out pretty much to a man uh, i mean uh, there may be more and woman jeez they if you would prefer that pronoun um <laughs> are destroyed in this um uh completely so if there are more celestial vindicators otherwise uh, otherwise around i'm sure there are 
but this particular storm host is done. I believe not coming back. I believe a point had been made that a lot of the Vindicators had been sent off to yeah. to fight in other places. So um, the it's... home base is annihilated. All all the the crew, you know, watching uh, tending the fires at home. Uh, yeah, they're 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 gone, and so is the home base. But right. uh, they still have uh, many of their forces out and about. Yes, yeah. now they're nomads. So we we pick up. Um... The Hollow Knights are there now. They're trying to relieve and trying to save the city. It's going poorly. Um, poor to the point where um, Lord Castle and Grimm, who was a favorite of mine, yes. um, he of um, uh, the original Realm Gate series uh, fame, um, where he is one of the ones who basically, after Gardas, is taken into the. Um, uh, is killed. Defending Alario when they when when um, Nurgle finds Alario, uh, Lord Castle and Grimm is the one who marches her um, and basically allows her uh, soul pod to be sewn into the ground and everything, and basically defends her. Loses his arm, um, and it's grown back with both uh, Stormcast and Alario's power later on. Um, so he was a pretty cool character. I really enjoyed him, and um, and Bellacor just awesome, just yep. done. So, enjoyed past tense right yeah. um all because I uh, all because i don't know what happened to the griffhound well uh, he's gone he's gone because gw doesn't something happened with the writer <laughs> that, that wrote him <laughs> like that looked legit and i was just like it's i'm sad i like grim it was better than gardas ever will be in my mind i like oh, Grimm. yeah there was yeah, so much Grimm, potential Grimm and it's just like for the, the story of the plague garden right he gets sucked into the plague garden and um, Gardas goes in after him, but it's really all about Grim. I don't know. He was a really good character, yeah. and he was now, probably like. It doesn't uh, say at any point that his soul was absorbed by anything, so he might have made it back. There's oof. now here's the other. Th well, maybe and here's the other thing, because his soul was part Sylvaneth. Now, there's ways to bring him back. Hmm. Like, I think there's ways we can bring him back, and they better, because he was better than Gardas. <laughs> he, was, he was an amazing character. He was yeah. an amazing character. I'd love to see him 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 some kind of like pseudo, <laughs> pseudo Sylvaneth Stormcast, bro. That'd be pretty good. Um, but anyway, he's dead. He's, he's, he's dead as dead gets it, as <laughs> yep. now. Um, but hey, it lights a fire so, underneath uh, Gardas. To, to, what's that? It, light, it lit a fire underneath Gardas to fucking try. For once, yeah, he tried. He tried. So he he takes on Bellacor one v one, and wow, does he just get bitch slapped? I mean, he, he gets a, he, he gets a few good. See the world no, he gets a few hits in. He gets a few hits, but they're really ineffectual. He does nothing. He, he was about to die, and he knew it <laughs> until. And here's the thing, too. Like Gardas is supposed to be like if you if you read that whole Plague Garden book, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but man, <laughs> this guy's a pretty top end Stormcast, and he does not hold ground against Bellacor. Bellacor <laughs> bitch slaps him. It's bad. Um, well, yeah, again, yeah. He when he's not looking, I think he gets he gets one hit in. Because the reason why he's he, uh, he's not looking is all of a sudden during this fight, this. Uh, this bright silver starts showing up on the horizon. It's getting closer and closer and closer. Well, it's not just silver. It's the munitions from basically every single Caradron fleet um, in the realm is now fired upon this city, upon the demons that are that are in the city. <laughs> and so that distracts him for a second, as, as it may would. And I think uh, Gardas finally gets a hit in. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, Neil, why, why specifically did the, uh, did the KO decide... We should help that city out. So, so they they have a, a meeting um, that is is like the biggest meeting since the creation of the code. Okay, and um, the frigate gets back with the engine master and the old grizzled uh, Arcanaut, and that Arcanaut kind of goes booming in and, uh, and talking sense into him. It's just, a, it's just a standard Arcanaut, right? Yeah. But his, his presence is such that everybody listens to him and like, hey, you know, he kind of make he's making sense. <laughs> he's he's um he's pleading to the uh, he's basically convincing them in their own way <laughs> to to go help. And so they they vote on it. 
And at first, there was not enough votes. After they arrived, they find enough votes, and off they go. Um, so they I arrive. I might not be good at shooting. I might not be good at meleeing. <laughs> I might not be good at uh, tagging. I might not be good at moving. But you should listen to me anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on. I'm draw I got to draw it. And, and he's, it's actually cool the way to describe him. He's always got this big old white beard. He's just tatted up like crazy. Um, it, it, he, he does seem pretty cool when they, they talk about him. And he's, so he's Santa come, Claus from a rough neighborhood. Exactly. <laughs> you guys oh, you guys are going a little fast. I'm trying to draw the dwarf council. Uh, I accidentally gave, I gave I gave not Grungni a huge penis. <laughs> we'll just we'll just make that even bigger now. Oh yeah, yeah. Drop 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 some knockers down there. Um. So the, the Caradron coming in, and they're just they're they're blowing the demons <laughs> to pieces. Bellacor sees his plans, and now Bellacor has been waiting like centuries, like planning this for. Okay. He's like long game, like Nagash. So, yep. Uh, that's that's the best way I can describe Bellacor. He he sits in the shadows and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits to the perfect time. So he and he's all about trying to one up Archeon. You know, he believes that he should be he should essentially be the ever chosen and this is his shot, right? And um, he's starting to see it crashing down a little bit. So he goes flying up, uh, leaves Gardas behind. He's like, you know, you're worthless. So he's not worried about him at all. And uh, he flies up to that lead Caradron frigate, jumps on it. There is, uh, if I can kind of interlude here, there is a really cool part, if you've been following Broken Realms, um, whereas they're, they're the female um, Caradron overlord from She's an admiral Alaska now. Before. Yeah, she becomes an admiral. She's an admiral. That's oh. right. So she um, she was the cartographer that found Neferata under the mountain. So she's the one that, that gets them there as fast as they can. And, and she's part of the fleet and everything too. So I, I thought that was kind of cool how they brought her out of that book and, and made sure she had a place in this too. Um, but he lands on that frigate and um, and the engine master is the one in the engine harness and he goes after Bellacor. He's got like, he goes alpha strike on him. He just, he just lets all the munitions go and Bellacor's like, poof, shadow. <laughs> everything misses and uh he, he basically steps on on the throat of that guy he's about uh you know that guy's freaking out from all the shadow magic and everything and uh then this arcanaut comes comes forward and he's just basically like tapping a hammer on his hand and just walking towards um towards bellicor and bellicor takes one look at him turns around and poof, poof and he's gone uh, because that arcanaut is actually grungni in uh, Arcanaut form, and he recognizes. Uh, they don't come out and say that, but it's pretty darn clear who who he actually is. Um, he basically says that he recognizes uh, the being in the sham uh, that he was trying to uh, to put on. Uh, and at the end, of, <clears throat> at the end, after Bellacor flees, the city's essentially saved at a very very high cost. Um, and Grungni tries to convince the overlords. Like, hey guys, you know we have you need to go down there and help. And the overlords are like, this is great because now we got them by the balls, and they're gonna owe us all this money, <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> He's trying to be like, you know, guys, this isn't the way. And um, and the guys basically, hey, like, what, like, what's this Arcanaut trying to tell me? You know, you know, something that goes completely against the code and everything. And Grungni essentially, um, kind of like, you know, God. I, he just is like, well, I'm not going to change your mind. So and he just pieces out. He's, He's like, nope. So yep. So, and then that's where we end, I, I feel like, unless I've missed something. Um, that, that, that is the last thing that happens. I guess the last thing, Order is the best, Order wins. But safe to say, Shaman, and it is spreading out to other realms, that um, Bellacor did break a bunch of gates. And there is a magical storm over Shaman and beginning to form beneath the over realms that prevents stormcast from going back to azir kind of blocks off it's essentially if like there was like imagine you're in a galaxy okay and and then there's a single point I'm of light yeah, well, yeah, exactly yeah so imagine imagine you're on earth or let's call it terra just just to make it unique and different and and there's a being of immense power there that has light kind of like the you know like azir is for the stormcast and so it's this, this light that beacon that everyone can focus on and get back to but but imagine that across the galaxy this chaos rift opens up and let's just call it i don't know the sick sickatrix maledictum i just pulled it out of nowhere i don't know where it came from and half the universe is now blocked it's kind of like 
kind of like that. Like uh, that's the best analogy I could figure out, just off the top of my head, just pulling random things together. But yeah, so. That sounds like 40k. Man, what? Man, I that. Oh no! Did they do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Must be. You, you leave your 40k out of my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Damn dirty apes. <laughs> so, realms, realms kind of fucked, but order still hanging on. I think that's where we left it, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty nice. I had no idea that the the bearded wonder was grungny i was like this is some obscure like old world Even I, knew it was grungy, I didn't read the book <laughs> oh my god that's funny dude yeah that, that actually I... puts a pretty good perspective for people who aren't uh <laughs> haven't been following this forever because mm -hmm. like the marathi thing like there's this soul that she doesn't want to eat because it's like it's complicated and i'm like it's who the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> it's all grungy well it, it, it's interesting it's like you read it it's Age like of it, it could be the white dwarf but like yeah no like it, part of it but like when at the end when balakor looks at it and goes oh i'm not fighting that but the only thing balakor's afraid of is the gods really and probably not all of them so uh, and not and I guess this is spoilers, but yeah, it is confirmed in Kragnos that it is Grungni. So we'll see more of him. I'm glad he's back in the realms. Uh, also, yeah, it's already spoiled because he makes new Stormcast army armor to negate the whole <laughs> whole thing that Broken Realms just caused for some reason. Like, let's just fix that immediately. Sure, okay. That's what Grungni does. That's true. I, I like. I think I put more. He put more beards on the helmets and the shields now. Yeah. I I like how they're retconning before books come out. They're already retconning them. Like what the? <laughs> what the hell? Well, yeah, that's I'm I, I. Their release schedule has to be all messed up because I I really doubt that they're like, hey, Curse City just came out. Um, here's Soul Blight and here's the main bad guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if uh, I'd like to point everybody over to uh, Warhammer Weekly. A couple, well, it's probably about a month or so back now. At this point, they did a episode on all the gods. And uh, one of the themes that comes out is just how, like, like mo most of these gods are, like, bad dads. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the best way I can explain Grungy is, like, if you've ever listened to a boy named Sue, yeah. <laughs> where the dad just kind of pieces out, leaves him with a bad name, and then it's just like, hey, but because I did that, you guys are better. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of what he did to the, to the dwarves. Like, he pieced out. Yep. The dwarves are like, well, we'll figure this out on our own. Right? They come up with this code and everything that gets them through the Age of Chaos. Then he, he, he like, shows back up. He's just like, hey, guys, you remember me? Hey, uh, hey, now, now, like, hold on. You should do it differently. Here. They're like, We're... <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> listen, listen, we are, we are veering a little bit of far from the, uh, the realm of truth here. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Those KO took off well before any of, the, any of the bad stuff happened. They're the ones that went like, Hey guys, see how your problems coming? You're probably gonna need as much help as you get. Peace. And they blocked it. <laughs> they were being attacked. Their mountain was being blown then, up. Actually, you know what? And what's... then Grugney was like, "I'm sure my people are fine without me. They are strong of fist and back." <laughs> and they're like, answer. "Hey, you know what? No, I'm. We're not. <laughs> you know what I'm realizing? What I'm realizing, Matt. So imagine you had a core race of dwarven in the mortal realms. All right." And uh, and they're constantly every day before I go to bed. Yeah, now they're <laughs> now they're they're under attack. Obviously, age of chaos. And there's some that are just like, no, we're staying here. We're sticking to the ways. There's other ones going, guys. The ways are going to get us in trouble. We need to change our ways and get out of here. So you have the fire slayers go off and do their own thing. You have the uh, the the character and overlords go off and do their own thing. And then the other ones stay. They try and stay true. It's like um. It's almost as if, like, like I'm just thinking, like, if this was set into the sci-fi universe, you'd have a, a race, but like, they'd probably be more elven. They'd be in their home realm, and, like, eh, things are not going right, no, and they decide no, to no. branch off, and, like, let's call let's call the ones that remain, like, uh, Drukhari, and let's call the, the Fire Slayers, let's call them Harlequins, just in this fantasy sci-fi setting I'm making up, and then the, the other ones, like the KO, we could just call them uh, um, Craft World. Yeah, the Craft World people, because they're on crafts, above the world i'm just this is a dwarf <laughs> <laughs> this is your dwarf on a craft. Yeah. sorry we could do this it, all night it loves runes it has a defensive shield wall and has units shoot behind it dwarf <laughs> wait, wait. does it have four inch movement Six. some of them do some of them do the ones with hammers some have four inch do. movement that's 
true. <laughs> no, so I I actually consumer. don't like even though like that that the, the Drakari dwarf reference there like i actually think that's fine it's a different lens it's interesting so like i'm not making fun of it the same way i'm making fun of like the astronomicum azir thing that just happened well that was um yeah. one thing that i was whenever uh neil was working on well, actually right after neil finishes ko i was like you know those are wood elves right <laughs> he's like what <laughs> and i was like well i mean they just show up they get their range attack on and then they just go somewhere else <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what what i was doing he's like damn it <laughs> <laughs> oh man well uh all right i mean that's actually that was pretty fun trying to draw maybe we'll do this for uh kragnos um <laughs> as well i think like i like you guys need to watch it back let me know what you think um that way we double our, our watch count from from everyone <laughs> if you listen to this on audio um your loss. Apparently, you're missing out. Yeah, yeah sorry. I don't know how that. Unless you can watch audio. If you can watch audio, you're one of those few people we talked about earlier. Then hey, more power to you. Then you are high as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, Andrew Dewitt, we love you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> because that, I think that man could get could get, get high enough to uh, watch our audio feed. <laughs> uh so. I guess uh, to wrap, I'll just leave Bellicorn's screen because I accidentally closed the other one I wanted. Um, kind of wrap up the show here. Uh, so there's been lots of news. Of course, the new edition of Age of Sigmar has been announced. It's coming out. There's been lots of streams, plenty of coverage. Uh, new box, Dominion, is coming out. So uh, we got the Cruel Boys and the new Stormcast. Um, I don't know if they've been called a new chamber or if they're just new armor variants. Uh, different. I guess you're right. Yeah, I don't know if they've officially called them a new chamber yet. I haven't, I haven't heard that, but I mean, I mean it seems likely. The, the Thunder Strike, so, but that is also the name of the armor, so. Yeah, true, so who knows, but um, what do you guys all think? Cole, you've been way too silent for jumping on this podcast, so let's go view first. Yeah, what do you think of this new box? Weird. Just just looking at the I box set. well. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at the box set itself, like the models, what do you think? Are you going Are you going to grab it? So I'm definitely going to grab the box set. If anything, it'll just be to go in with my Stormcast army. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the uh, what are the three bigger guys. Uh, I don't even remember their names yet. Annihilators. Annihilators. Those have got to be my favorite models out of the box. Uh, probably going to try and run a unit of them at least. I'm hoping. Uh, the, the Spearmen don't quite do it for me. Other than that, I love everything in the Stormcast half of this box. Did you, uh, were you, as a Stormcast player, were you as surprised as me when they announced the Andrasta as part of that box? Yes. And doubly yeah, so I when you realize she's attached, her spur is attached yeah. to the Vexilor? <laughs> yeah, I was very sad about that. I mean, me and Matt discussed that over in Big M's, but yeah, it was very saddening to see. Yeah, I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, because I want you draw, the Andrasta. I'm like, well, I guess I'm getting this box set. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it, yep. it's going to be a nightmare. It is going to be an absolute nightmare because that thing's going to sell out in two minutes. So, I mean, it's probably going to sell in a couple of days. So don't rush to buy it. Yeah, <laughs> take your time. Yeah. I say Cole and I have this yeah. have this wonderful wonderful place called the Toy Soldier Gallery. Norm is yeah. the best. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I messaged him. I think Cole's messaged him. So, Norm will likely get at least two, and Cole and I will be the ones to get it from that shop. Yeah. <laughs> I already messaged him, so yeah, good. There's one already with my name. No, he's he's totally getting one box, and he's gonna make you fight over it. <laughs> and then actually, he'll probably the just gets the box, and then he'll point out, oh, I had this second one right here all along. <laughs> actually, it's if gonna be like the beat it music video, he's gonna tie their hands together and give them knives. <laughs> oh, actually, if if we got if he got if he only got one box, I don't really. I, I mean, the cruel boys don't like beautiful models, and I'm glad to see people are excited for them. I don't care about them at all, like as far as like an urge to paint them or play that army. So like that doesn't bother me. And like with Cole, like we could split the storm gas. We, I'm taking the book. Yeah. I'll fight you. <laughs> I'll cut you. Uh, we That's might have playing into Norm's hands. One. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but we could split the storm cast equitably if we if we had to. Um, if we needed to. <laughs> But, uh, Neil, what about you? What do you think about that new box set, the Minion? Uh, I love everything about it. Uh, the Cruel Boys, actually, I think are really cool. I I own now, I think, seven different armies. None of them are Destruction. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> so, 
Uh, at some point, that'll be rectified. But like those uh, the new spear chuckas, if you want to call them that, I don't know what they're actually called. Um, the, the ones with, like the big ballista and crap, and the other ones with the the crossbows and all that. Yeah, I'm all about it. I, I've heard some people talk about, oh, they look like LOTR orcs. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Are they cool of them? Yeah, yeah, they're cool. <laughs> all right, so I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't know what they, what they look like in, in the Middle Earth game. I don't. Really these care. these don't models look, look like good <laughs> models. Oh right. well, shoot. <laughs> guess I guess I'll buy them. So uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, what? Uh, yeah. And I kind of oh, look like they're from mean, something else. Cool. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> if if you've been playing this game long enough, they did put out hobgoblins a long time ago. We're talking. <laughs> 90s early 90s there were hobgoblins jumping around and they all had funny hats like most things in warhammer um so you can actually see some of that aesthetic <clears throat> was kind of put into that um, especially with some of the lower level troops which which is kind of cool and so they have the hob- they were gonna make something that was hobgoblin and they were going to make it to their own ip mm-hmm. and you got cool boys and so it's halfway between goblins halfway between orc i mean it is an orc I know, ba- based on the keyboard and all that, and uh, I don't know. I think no, they're were... they're definitely Orklins. Yeah, I stand by it. <laughs> nice, mm-hmm. that's good. So, um, as far as the Stormcast goes, I think they look cool. I don't. know. They're Stormcast. Like you can't be mad at them. Yeah, I. <laughs> I, I think Unless you're commenting on the internet. Who have Stormcast oh. armies? <laughs> Awesome. If I had them, I would get them. Um, I don't have a Stormcast army, so I will not be worried about it. I also don't have a Destruction army, so I will not be worried about it. Um, I think the box is awesome, though. So if I had either one of those things, I would be all over it. But unfortunately, right now for me, I cannot start a new army, so it's no, not no, happening. Neil, as of if you had that box, you'd have both of those things. That's that's the that's point. Fair, Dave. Right um, now, here's the, the, here's another box. Here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, kn- I I told Dave that I can I won't give him the cruel boys for free, but maybe I'll give them to you for free, Neil, just to make you paint them. Because I think that might bring Dave joy. <laughs> I don't know. I need to I need to workshop now, what would this. What happen is within the year I'd have four thousand points and I know. Uh, a divorce. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly why Amy wants me to do this, Neil. Exactly Ooh. Right. Ooh. Well, so, da- so, so yeah. real quick, let me yeah. let me ask you, Neil. What is your favorite? Cruel boy unit, excluding the hero. It's not the hero, actually. I think the hero is cool. Um, I mean, Dave, Dave described the the beast he was riding as kind of like a skinned uh, or like a shaven warg. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, which I can see. Um, but what about I think the unit? Like those big ballistas, and honestly, for the stormcast, it's the chariot dudes like oh yeah getting back to some old um chariot out of nowhere warhammer fantasy bringing the chariots in bringing the ballistas in i don't know that kind of speaking to my my <laughs> old old bearded heart <laughs> <laughs> all right so so you heard it here first the cruel boy uh ballistas and the chariot will be the worst units in those are oh, for sure so. <laughs> 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 and you'll see me like uh, complaining to only you four, of course, because that's what I do. Uh, I try to keep it pretty positive otherwise, but uh, yeah, you guys get the brunt of it, don't you? Nice. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so Matt... Six re-rolling successes? This is bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what's your thoughts on the new box? Uh, I love... I mean, the... Because so you, you, have, you have Iron Jaws, you have Stormcast. Yeah, um... With the amount of movement F I have, I don't think I can start another venture. Oh, you also have uh, an employee discount, so how much do you like this well, box? <laughs> <laughs> well, enough to get two of it. There you <laughs> go. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, I I don't is I like the cool boy aesthetic. I love the lore of it. I think everything is really neat and very well put together. Uh, I don't. I can't see me painting that much patched together leather though <laughs> like i can't see me actually sitting down to paint them it was okay uh, on the on the gargants because there's five right exactly <laughs> i mean that was the whole thing is like um there was there was a total of well we have nine models total and i threw contrast at them and the flesh looks all terrible but you know what it's done so <laughs> uh, where it's like if i did anything with a higher model count i would feel obligated to like try yeah yeah and so, like, like, so for example, your Lumineth. Right, right. I mean, this is going to be the three months of detail army. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, like I said, I'm I'm absolutely going to get it. I'm absolutely going to uh, reinvigorate my Stormcast. Uh, I have a Sacrosanct Force. I I can't imagine me not getting a Thunderstrike Force. Right. Dave, what about uh, what be yourself? Thoughts on this new one? The, I d you don't have either of those armies, correct? That is correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dave, like these are the ugliest Seraphon I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Matt stole my best line. Um, <laughs> no, I, I totally didn't think up that. That's that's fantastic, though, Matt. Um, I love I love it all. Uh, I will not be buying this, but I love it all. It's it's these are just gorgeous models. Uh, uh, I mean, they're just getting more and more impressive. Uh, right. I would actually hate painting some of these. Uh, like, there's so much detail; it's insane. Um, but uh, I particularly love the little um, the pot grot and the stab grot that, well, that tag along with the, the th yeah. Uh, those are just heroes. heroes. Yeah, so you can just hopefully buy those heroes eventually, throw the hero away, and keep the pot grot. Uh, speaking of those, I hope that um, the 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 killer boss on foot. I know they kind of talked about them just like him just throwing the little guy away. Like as soon as I hope to God there is a. Um, command reaction where he can literally just punt him like six inches in the middle of a charge like oh it's, so he stops the charge that would be pretty cool yeah, yeah. i'd like that that's pretty legit i don't know and, actually with, with, with my play style i'm not sure how i haven't found my way into orcs at some point <laughs> well i'll bring my iron jaws and you can try them out for <laughs> it's, it's it, probably more more goblins honestly or grots that's it's I, I've tried a f Iron Jaws a few times. I don't own them, but I've you know proxy played them, and they are really fun. It's it's, <laughs> it's just go forward, scream wall, and have fun. Like it, like you can do that and still have a shot at winning the game. So nothing wrong with that. Um, Neil, you can try my Beast Claw sometime. That's mm. that's what they do, but on a fifty fifty basis. <laughs> you know, the the ogres are not uh, are not ironically hilarious enough for me. So. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's because you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for me, yeah, I'm going to get the box. Uh, most I, I don't have any destruction armies either, despite the fact that I have numerous armies. I'm always I'm all I'm only chaos and order right now. Um, I said, uh, I'm really excited. People are really into the cruel boys, and it's going to be fun to see people paint them up because, like, yeah, there's a ton of detail, but they don't do it for me. So I will be probably shifting those off. Dave is the current person first in line for right of refusal. He hasn't agreed yet. And that's fine. Like I'm you, not holding you to anything, Dave. It's just you have first right of refusal on it. Um, and then uh, that's just because I'm the only person who runs a destruction army that you know. <laughs> no, we have uh, we have Jeremy in the club. Um, I have two destruction. Armies. Brad in the club. <laughs> you don't count. Matt has destruction <laughs> army. <laughs> Matt's gonna have more than enough anyway. He's he's gonna get two for every one that we can afford. Um, <laughs> so there's there's options, but like you know like. You have first right of refusal from them. Like I, I, I don't like. I saw them. I'm like, those are great models, but like, there's no like attachment to it. Like, like I see Stormcast. I'm like, oh, I, I, every time there's new Stormcast chamber or things like this, even though this isn't called a chamber yet, um, I always add a few. So, like, I like the new heroes. I like the new models. I might not paint all of the spear ones. I might give one of those away to like one of our club members, like Luke. Uh, you know, he's he's college kids. Like, here, here's five new Stormcasts. Go have fun. Uh, cause I'm not sure if he's going to be able to, you know, pick up the box set and all that. So it's like, I, I don't really need them all. Uh, I just want to add a few more. Um, but yeah, like, and the the two things that really sold me on this box is one that the special cover is only in that box, and I, I do like my special cover books uh, when I can get them. And two, Yandrasta being in that box, like, I just, I want her Which like. If you want her, she's definitely sold separately. Just mull it over until like Wednesday before your pre order. Just... I I think she will be eventually sold separately, like it maybe in a, a variant Absolutely. sculpt. But like yeah, like when I saw I'm like uh, she's like the one thing I wanted right away. I was like I like I kinda knew she was coming, obviously. And I was like, ah, I can't wait to get her. I'm like, why is she in the box? Holy cow, okay, I guess get in the box here. Now, I do have a, I, I do have a, a, an opinion question or a prediction question for people. Do you think that her armor color is going to be a new paint, or do you think they're going to show a video on how to, how to achieve it? Ooh. It's like a silvery 
gold, huh? Yeah, it, it's um, it's yeah. it's borderline rose gold. Uh, they'll give us the paint video. Yeah, if it was going to be a new color, I bet it would have been across the whole line. I, I think well, it's I it's just like a silver paint job with like seraphim sepia or something like that. Yeah, like it doesn't look distinguishable enough as a new unique color. But well, if it I mean, is, if you look at, that'd be cool. If you look at the Necron, they got their own color. But again, like Chuck yeah. said, it is across the whole yeah, if it was, if Also, it, this is yeah. not 40k. Let's keep that 40k <laughs> nonsense out of here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, uh, I think, actually, the article that went up on Games Workshop today said to keep an eye out for the article tomorrow, which will be June 5th? Yep, June 5th. Saturday. Yeah, sa Saturday. <laughs> um, probably when this goes live, I'll put this out tomorrow, um, that they're going to announce when we can pre-order this new box set. So sometime in June, we can pre-order it. I have a feeling it's going to be at the end of June. Uh, I, I, I'm or, telling you right now, if they're going to put it up for pre-order next Saturday during the friggin' tournament, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> well, okay, anytime there's been pre-orders like that at tournaments, like I've I've literally seen TOs at the time add an extra 15 minutes and be like everyone stop 15 minutes pre-order your shit all right back to gaming i have I seen that three years ago yep you remember mm -hmm. it was right there in ours yeah. yeah i i i did one for uh i i paused games for mm -hmm. adepticon registration at a rent for event for everybody yep. so <laughs> yeah. yep that was that well, was a pretty again, good deal for I, a lot last of thing players. i want is is martin to an entire room of people that are going to buy this thing be like everyone stop pre-order the box <laughs> they can just wait until wednesday all right? they... <laughs> yeah. I, I think one person actually gets through and you just beat the shit <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a two-week pre-order well see um, you say and they're still going to run out after two days oh you say two-week pre-order they're going to be run out after 20 minutes mm -hmm. yeah no but they're no, still going to set it up two weeks minimum. in advance uh, you're right so it, you're going to be pre-ordering pre-ordering two weeks before it would be available well, in stores I think it's they... gonna be this month though, because the, whenever they start releasing rules, the pre-orders yeah. hot on the on the tails of actually. Yeah. I have a feeling I the pre-order is gonna be on the 18th, and it will release on the second. That's my guess. And no insider knowledge. I just think that's what's gonna happen, because yeah, that's say... two weeks, and it but actually won't land till July. Because don't forget, was it July 4th was the Age of Sigmar birthday? Didn't they say it was gonna release the out in June though. I think they said pre-order in June. I don't know if they've officially said uh, release in June. I think some, I think some podcasts have assumed that, but I think it's pre-order in June. So I, I hope it, I hope it is what it is. But yeah. my fear is pre-orders go live on the twelfth, comes out on the twenty-sixth. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow, as everyone will, or today, if you're listening to this or, on the, or, or like, hey, or you're too late. Now. Yeah, <laughs> depends when you listen to this. <laughs> Uh, Pre-order but... was last week. Yeah, How but did nobody order it. <laughs> but you're just <laughs> oh, good luck. Uh, I have some cruel boys for sale for you. But uh, yeah, we'll ra we'll wrap up here. Um, uh, I think, think pre-order. Uh, I think they it's going to be dependent on having proof of purchase of cursed city. Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave. I said we're going to wrap up here. Stop adding content. Save it. Save it. Damn it. It's not valuable. I'm not going to save like that shit. <laughs> everyone's your receipt for your Curse City copy. Everyone's uh, no, yes, <laughs> see. Everyone's tuned off right now. They're like, "Oh, it's done. It's over. It's turned off." So this is where we th start doing the real content. <laughs> but no. yeah. uh, Bye, everybody. So now we start after dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Cole, where can people find you on socials? Uh, people can find me at C McGun uh, over on Twitter. I don't have really anything else going on right now so okay uh you'll be posting i guess uh your time at aco coming up here give us that live oh, yeah. tournament experience for those that aren't able to make it yep definitely Let's see if we can uh top 16 this one heck have yeah fun with it. take those nasty nasty eels yes well, i'm bringing sun so i definitely top five that's yeah that's yeah, solid yeah. matt can we find you anywhere or are you still deleted yeah. on socials yeah, yeah at at strength hammer underscore okay hashtag hey matt yeah perfect gotcha Neil, yourself? You can find me at Night of the Living Dave. Um, you'll find... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. The word thing doesn't fit. That's too long. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take that from Dave, so he had absolutely nothing to say. Um... <laughs> and you screwed it up. I still have nothing valuable to say, so it doesn't uh, matter. You can find me at Neil LaRocca on Twitter, and you can find me on the Ren4 Facebook page uh, bothering people 
almost daily. Dave, yourself? Uh, I am actually at Night of the Dave. I wanted Night of the Living Dave, but it's too long. Stupid Twitter and its short names. <laughs> um, and I actually tweeted a little bit earlier a yeah. picture or a couple pictures of my in-progress Camara. Uh, Camara. Nice. So, there you go. I've actually used Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And as for me, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at strengthhammer underscore and also strengthhammer.net. Also check out our merch at Teespring. All links uh, to all of our socials and stuff is in the description below. Uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay Stormcast strong, and talk to you guys soon. Hi everybody, this is Chuck from the Strength Hammer Podcast, and I got my good buddy Alex Fit Hammer <laughs> from Instagram. Uh, we're recording in my car, so it sounds like crap. Turn this off. <laughs> uh, otherwise, keep listening, because we're... It's, it's May 31st, so Memorial Day in the U.S., and we're off to my CrossFit gym to do Murph. America. It's America, yeah. America. America. Honor, <laughs> honor, honor, honor the fallen, the yeah. veterans, all that, so... Uh, yes. Yeah, so Alex, how you doing? Good, good, very good. Very excited for this workout. Okay. Super um, stoked. Okay, that, I mean, come on, I gotta hype it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so doing the Murph, Murph workout. So mile run, 100 pull ups, 200 push ups, 300 air squats, mile run. It's supposed to be done with a 20 pound weight vest. Uh, so we'll see how well that goes. So I've never RX'd it, Alex. I, you've done this workout once before? I've done it once before without the vest. Yes. And that was a uh, butt whooping workout. Yeah. Now, I've been doing CrossFit for a while, so I'm probably not going to wear the vest the whole time because I know my body. You said you're going to? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to record now, and we're going to record the drive back so you can have more lovely audio <laughs> to uh, to hear to see how, how it went for us. Um, I'd like to be under an hour uh, with what I'm going on. It shouldn't be a problem. Like I said, I've done this before in various scalings, so it's going to suck, but it's supposed to suck, and you're supposed to complete it. But um, yeah, uh, but Alex, what's uh, what's your mindset going into the workout? Uh, you know, I'm I've been training for this for the last three weeks uh, using some uh, you know weighted pull-ups, weighted push-ups, weighted squats. Three weeks, people. Three weeks. I mean, it's not a lot, hold on, hold on. but uh, it's you gotta hear people. I'm cracking my rain body fuel. That caffeine. There you go. All right. But uh, you know, I would like to get it in under an hour and twenty. Um, you know, knowing that I I've never really done weighted workouts before, so I'm giving myself a more generous timeline than Chuck but uh, hour and 20 would be great under an hour would be amazing somewhere in between would be great too not dying is the best. not dying would be great yeah. or not hurting myself terribly that uh, would be awesome as well yeah, yeah. but uh, you know like going through it if anyone else is doing it or has done it like you know like have your plan going in and have like your your backup plan like if, if my hand rips on those pull-ups and I'm 50, 50 deep I'll switch to ring rows or right exactly or or maybe I'll be stubborn and fight through it. It just you know, depends <laughs> on the mentality of the day. But, we'll uh, find out soon enough. Yeah. But uh, why don't you... It's been a while since you've been on the podcast, so why don't you tell people a little about yourself? Like, so you, you do Warhammer with me. That's yep. where we met. You also do fitness with me. Um, you know, you kind of just ripped off my name blatantly on <laughs> I, I kind social of media. I kind of did, yeah. Uh, tell, tell people about yourself. For sure. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at fit underscore hammer. Uh, very different from strength underscore hammer. No, strength so, hammer underscore. Strength hammer underscore. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, but yeah, you can find me there on Instagram. I post uh, hobby stuff, uh, a bunch of fitness stuff. I also post some nutrition stuff. My goal in the community is uh, kind of to just promote healthy lifestyle, promote uh, good nutrition, and uh, among uh, you know people in the hobby because it's not we we are not usually known for uh, the healthiest habits. We don't sleep a lot. We don't eat very healthy, and we don't work out. So I'm trying to. You know, try to do, be a positive change in our community. And so far, I've motivated a couple of people. So, you know, they DM me and uh, seen some positive changes. So I, I'm, I'm going to claim them. Okay, yeah, sure. You, I did, you can't I, do I that. Did the, I did this first. So she I, did I'm, do the I'm first. Claiming, I'm claiming I motivated you. Right. I know it's not exactly. true. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> no. There's actually, I've had a lot of people, uh, especially on Instagram specifically, that's where fitness tended mind the people yes. seem to be. I mean, I'm also on Twitter, but it's that's mostly just Warhammer nerd talk. But um, I've had quite a few people reach out to me like uh, uh, I screw up the, the handles but like there's there's half ogren 
That, yeah, that, that's a he's jack great. buff. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, there's another uh, CrossFitter, uh, Havoc zero zero nine. I might be screwing up his name a little bit, but um, yeah, there's there's quite a number of uh, fitness people in the hobby. And actually, on Facebook, I got pulled into. Even though I don't really play 40k all that much, mm-hmm. there's a group called Fit 40k. And there's a guy. He's done like high level amateur bodybuilding. There's you know there's there's a lot more fit people, and it's nice to see them like you know kind of. Fu- sharing our love of Warhammer while still right. getting in shape and helping each other and it's like you know it, it's not just people who have done fitness before like there's people just starting out and, right and that's the best that's the best thing you know? yeah just just start out like it's it, fitness is for everyone like right you can't do a push up and lean against the wall and start your push ups that way and, and go you right. know, like there's so many different scaled options and what I like about your content Alex is you definitely try to uh, teach a lot more than not right Right, because a lot of beginners, a lot of people who don't know where to start, you know, and the goal is, the ultimate goal is not to, you know, do a crazy workout to punish yourself. You know, that's kind of the big thing I'm trying to you know uh, communicate. About, you know we're about to do CrossFit, right? I know, I know. <laughs> but we're, we're challenging ourselves, not punishing ourselves. That's true, But yeah. the mindset is, you know, you're doing this because you want to take care of your body, because you, you love uh, what you are, and you want to take care of this, you know, wonderful body that you have. And you want to live a healthy life and play board games longer. So, yeah. uh, you know, the idea is that and not to punish yourself, not do this out of hate, but do it out of love. So that's kind of the message I'm trying to spread on my page as well. Yeah, that's, yeah no, I love it. Like, it's always about love for me. Like, I, right. I'm not... People will message me and, like, DM me and, like, ask for stuff. And, like, I'll toss them to the people I know that do it on their page. And I'll offer my insights. But also, you, you're actually... You're, you're a trained nutritionist. Yeah, I'm a dietitian. Dietitian, so, okay. Yep. Whereas, like, I'm just... I'm just I'm Chuck. I, I do this for fun, and I <laughs> like Chuck. it. I just I just kind of talk about what I do. Uh, so like you know, if, if someone's following my stuff and uh, you want someone who's gonna maybe teach you more through you know through his stories on Instagram and stuff like that, definitely follow Alex here. Um, people can't see the thumbs up. We're not I know. Video. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? But yeah, like I, I I just do it more I guess for like just entertainment, just like just to show like this is what I'm doing and everyone can do it too but yeah the, the, the teaching aspect is definitely a really good thing that you're doing out yeah, there but you definitely inspired me you know I started the page uh, definitely ripped it off you you did but uh, away. definitely a big inspiration was it's, from you it's okay I listen ever, I, I guess uh, <laughs> I think back to the time when we met you were still not 100% fluid in English? No, yeah. By the way, I'm not from oh, yeah. USA. I'm, I'm a citizen You're now. A citizen now, yeah. But, you know, so go America. But uh, I def- I came here from Russia about 10 years ago. And, yeah. yeah, our first game, I remember, it was, yeah. uh, it we, was a struggle. <laughs> we met through Warhammer, Warhammer Fantasy. We were both playing High Elves. I had the brand new 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battles yes. book, my first games. Alex had the 7th edition, and it was in Russian. <laughs> We had no idea what was going on. It was it was it was awful, but you know, we got a friend for life. And but yeah, it, it was still a fun game. But yeah, it was so confusing. Yeah, and now that uh, I, said, I I do I do like that. You know, one of my close close friends is, is as much into fitness into me. Like right. you know, on the usual show we have you know Dave, Neil, and Matt, and you know they all are working on their fitness levels you know on their own way, and like it's very it's kind of nice because we have lots of talking points but like you know I need that someone to push me and every time I open up my Instagram page and I see Alex do something I'm like son of a bitch <laughs> I gotta keep going and like he's 12 years younger than me I, th- I think so something like that yeah 12 years yeah, exactly. yeah so I'm trying to keep up with someone who's much younger than me because I don't understand what age is to myself anymore <laughs> that's why I do it Chuck. for I you I thank you it's a, it's a big it's a big help big big help but um alright we're we're gonna listen to some loud music yes pop music get pumped yeah, pop music, because that's what I do. Um, drink some uh, rain body yep. fuel. More caffeine. Make sure we're hydrated, and we're going to go uh, do Murph, so we'll see you on the drive back. Oh, also, a- after Murph, uh, or maybe before Murph, eh, probably after, um, I'm going to teach Alex how to properly yes. squat and deadlift with a yes. barbell, get him out of his Planet Fitness ways. Right, right. Yeah, I go to Planet Fitness, guys, which is, you know, nothing wrong with if you're just starting. But you know, lift things up and I put them down. Yeah, exactly. You can lift things up and put them down yeah, pretty I'm, much anywhere. <laughs> I'm I'm more of the meathead style, but yeah, no. Do, I've been in Planet Fitness and then Alex has done workouts there to kick my ass. So right, you can get it. You can get anywhere. Yeah, exactly. All right, catch you guys later. See you in a bit. Okay, we are back after Murph. Oh yeah. Um, 
crushed it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we both did pretty well. We both went in with our plans. No, 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 no. We crushed it. Crushed it. Yeah. yeah. Muscle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Muscle it. That's who does Murph. Yeah. That's. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, you you no, see no, two hundred and fifty no. pound guys doing CrossFit <laughs> all the time. Hey, there are a couple of guys who are huge. There's a couple. Yeah. There's there's some beasts in my gym. And it's, yeah. It's, it's crazy. I felt very intimidated. Good. Good. I'm glad <laughs> that, I, that was very friendly, actually. Everybody yeah. was super cool. No. Yeah. We have a we have a very very good uh, group of people. They're very kind. They're very welcoming. Um, you know, but like I show up with like my Russian friend, and he just he just crushes me in the workout <laughs> by about seven minutes. Yeah, not terrible. Plus 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 a little bit of a difference there, but uh, yeah. So Alex, um, general thoughts. What do you, what do you think about Murph? I think it's great. I think it's uh, familiar enough for most people because it's pull ups, push ups, and squats. Like and me, running. no, and running. Yeah, everybody everybody can well. Everybody knows what a push-up, a pull-up, and a squat and running is. So for me, who has no idea about anything CrossFit, like sometimes you post stuff and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. Yeah, like uh, what's what's cleaning? What's, right, what's a cleaning? What's even, snatch, even like yeah. you mentioned RX today, I didn't even know what RX means. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like it's very familiar to me. So in that sense, it was very easy for outsiders. I feel mm-hmm. like, and uh, yeah, overall good atmosphere. Everybody is cheering you on. Like when you're on your last breath and barely holding on people are like yeah you got this keep going so oh, yeah. it's I, I found that um, the first year I think 2019 when I did uh, my first CrossFit Open yeah you know I went to like uh, I was usually doing them at lunchtime which was a smaller crew of people uh, but I went to like the big class for the last workout and like yeah, like that last minute, I, the only thing I can describe it as is, is aggressive positivity. <laughs> yeah. When you're just being overwhelmed by people cheering at you because they just want to see you just like fucking nail it. Right. And you're just like overwhelmed, but it's so motivating and so good. Right. Um, it's yeah, a so, good atmosphere. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love CrossFit 519 for life, um, <laughs> which is why I drive an hour to work every day. Exactly. And that's why we drove an hour one way and back because it, we could have done this anywhere, but like, now nah, I wanted to do it at, at my gym. Right. Uh, so, Alex, what's... Uh, you, you did RX, which, yes. is, which is the prescribed way. So RX means you did exactly as listed. So you did a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, mile run. and you 300 did all, squats. 300, 300 squats, sorry, 300 squats. Um, yeah, just look up Murph. I'm, 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 I'm brain dead. But, it's okay. Uh, but you did it with a 20-pound weight vest the whole time, yes. which is the prescribed. Yes. Um, so like you had a rep scheme. Now, the mile run, you, oh, there's always a mile run at the start at the end, but you yeah. can mix up the middle uh, three movements how you want. So how did you do your rep scheme? Yeah, so uh, initially I wanted to approach it uh, by 5, 10, 15, which means 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and then 15 squats. Yeah. And I did that for half of it. So once I got to 50 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, and 150 squats, I'm like, this is very difficult. So then I just, uh, for the rest of the workout, I did finished all the pull-ups, then did all the push-ups, and then did all the squats. And that helped me out a lot in the end, I think, mentally. Yeah, I mean, like, fucking hell. Like, you did it with, with the prescribed right weight. So I went in. I knew, like, like I ran the miles with the weight vest, but I took it off for all the other movements. Uh, I probably could have put it on for the air squats, but I was just too far in just trying to get stuff done by the time I did it. Because I was going to go in and do half of each, so 50 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 150 air squats, yeah. and then do it again. Right. But when I was going in, I did the mile run. I think I was maybe like 11 minutes on that run. I think yeah. you were just about 10. You were ahead of me a little bit. Right, a little bit. Not um, but that's you know it's not terrible. Uh, that was a hill. Yeah, there was, there, was well. a, there was a pretty big hill. <laughs> I don't love right that, up. but yeah, it's alright. Yeah, I mean Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I I got to fifty pull ups and I was about to stop and I was just thinking like man I just I just don't want to think about these fucking pull ups again. So I just kept going. So instead of splitting in half, I just did exactly as listed. So I did hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, and three hundred air squats. I just just each you know did them all. Uh, right away just to keep going so once I got through the push-ups like push-ups was my hardest part yeah, um, yeah. air squats weren't that hard for me like I can my legs I have really strong legs so trunks for legs <laughs> um, you know but my my baby upper chest is uh... <laughs> yeah push-ups are probably the easiest yeah you like like I said you had the weight vest on like I'm sitting there like you're like oh I got like 50 left and I'm sitting here I had like 80 <laughs> and you're just like boom knocking out 5 to 10 and I'm just like one one <laughs> On. <laughs> well, that's what I train. You train legs. I'm sure your squats took no time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my, my air squats were, I don't know, less than like four minutes or something. Like right. that was, and then like that, then I had to do the run at the end, which was <laughs> no. took the weight vest back on, went out for the run, and I tried to be sub hour. You got 54 minutes on 54 the duck. 54 minutes. Yep. 
and I got uh, 61.56. So I wanted sub hour, but I'm not displeased. I mean, it's a hell of a hard That's workout. Very good. Um, plus, also, it's like I, I do have this problem constantly where I look at you and I'm just like, I, I can fucking keep up with him. And then it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, you're 12 years younger than me. But you also, I mean, that kept you motivated as well. Oh, absolutely. Sense, right? So you yeah, want like, to be able to keep up. I almost went to the uh, smaller pull bar because it's easier to do singles on. Ah, there and you I go. saw you. I'm like, no, I gotta go stand next to him because, <laughs> like I said, I'll look over at you and I'll just be like, just go, 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 right. go. And like I said, I didn't didn't stop, didn't move, and you know, it's 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 interesting. Like, and then we came off of that, rested for a little bit, and then uh, I was teaching how to squat properly yes. and do deadlifts properly because you just don't have access to that in your current gym because you're no. in your plan fitness. Right. Right. Um, it's all Smith machines there. Yeah, so you don't get the full workout. But like, right. yeah, you're you're doing good with it. You PR'd on your back squat. Yep, which is not a lot, but I'm happy I got to where I got. Yep, and then uh, after you failed and dropped it, it was like, all right, we'll just deadlift there now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so it was great. Right. I switched it back down. Like, deadlift was good. Um, yeah, and then, uh, oh, I showed you the good morning squats just for fun. Yeah, that was a good movement so, for stretching. Yeah, if you're going to watch his Instagram, you're going to see his, uh, his, his uh, good morning squats. Yeah, uh, I'm going to create a highlight with uh, a Murph 2021. And you're going to tag me, right? And I'm going to tag you, okay, and good. you can see it off, <laughs> even after 24 hours passes. So go at uh, fit underscore hammer, and you can check out uh, and you the can, highlight reel. And you can find that by going to strength hammer underscore and looking at the people I follow. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't look me up in the search bar. Just don't go, search, no. Just go strength hammer underscore and look yeah, up and for sure, fit underscore hammer. And make sure you follow me there. But um, <laughs> yeah, so... so Okay, so you did. Let's let. That's your first proper Murph because you did yes. with the weight vest the first time, right? Yes. So, uh, what did you think of CrossFit coming from a more more bodybuilding style? Not that you're a bodybuilder, but right. but like that's okay. you, you, you train to show muscles. Right. Exactly. I, I train for more for aesthetics. I like strength. I like feeling strong, but I like balance. I like uh, sculpting my body, and like it's kind of you know I love. Which is why you'll see pictures of Alex with. His shirt off more than me because he will have a six pack long but, before I do. Right, but that's my goal, right? Yeah. I'm kind of chipping away at my body, you know, trying to get more balanced physique and also feel strong, feel good. That's how just that's just my hobby. Yeah. But uh, you know, I do like pushing myself. I definitely like this. The mental, the mental struggle at the end where you're like, I don't want to keep running anymore, but if I keep running, I'll make it sub uh, one hour. Yeah, you know, and that's I did like that as well. I know, like on a. I was running, I was, we were, I was probably like a quarter mile in on my last mile, and you were three quarters yeah. coming back, yeah. and I was just yelling at you, like, just don't stop, you can get sub one hour, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, that was great, that was a great motivation as well. <laughs> yeah, you were, yeah, you, were, you, you crushed it. Um, I mean, you too, man, that was great. I feel good about it, I think that's, I don't know if that's my best time, I, but it's like, I think that's the first time where I did all the movements prescribed, even though I didn't have the weight vest on for everything. Right. So next year, the goal is to do the whole workout with the weight vest on, not take yeah. it off. Train for that, yeah. Yeah, which... Just keep doing CrossFit and then you know, ramp up. Now, this is an excuse, but like, like hopefully I can plan next year where I don't have work travels. Right. Before right, the week before right. Murph, where it's like, oh, well, okay. So you can prepare a little better. Yeah. yeah. And like kind of zero in and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah. No, so yeah, now we're um, gonna drive home. We got uh, we got some steaks and some mm-hmm. veggies at home to to cook and eat up, and then uh, maybe play play some more Hammer. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what time's like, but uh, I guess for the people who have suffered through the uh, fitness talk for the last, I don't know, was it 20 minutes maybe? I don't know how long it's going. But, Close to that. Um, what, uh, what are you working on hobby-wise right now for Warhammer? For me? Oh, yeah. So right now uh, there is this cool event coming up in July called Rent 4. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Battle Across the Realms. Battle Across the Realms, which is uh, Triumph and Treachery style rules that are modified by a great guy. I follow them on Facebook, uh, Rent4, I believe. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a cool narrative event coming up, so I'm trying to finish up uh, my Halfling Cities of Sigmar army, which is kind of an ongoing project for the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years. And I'm building it up slowly, a lot of conversions. So I'm trying to, you know, do some finishing touches. Obviously, everything is built and painted. I'm just trying to do some finishing touches to paint it up a little bit nicer. So, uh, you know, I'm not worried about winning best, uh, you know, general or anything like that. But a best army would be pretty cool. So I'm working on that. Yeah. No, I, I'm. Uh, I have I'm trying to get my uh, current Daughters of Cain list to the point where I'm happy with it before 3.0 drops here, uh, which I think pre-orders are in June for Age of Sigmar. So I have 10 more Witch Elves and 20 more Sisters of Slaughter to uh, paint through. And then, when AOS 3 drops, I'm starting a second Dark Army. 
Of course you would. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like I looked at everything. I'm like, it's just what I want to do. I like yeah, screw it. That's fair. This is what I like. I'm just gonna keep doing. It. I'm gonna do a different paint scheme. Of course. I'm probably gonna have one color that kind of blends across too, so I can kind of put them together if I ever feel like it. Mm -hmm. But this whole new, the second Doc Army, it's gonna be smaller. It's gonna probably just be two thousand points. Um, but I'm gonna use all third party managers. Oh no way! I didn't know that. Because my main Doc Army is all GW Legit. stuff. Legit. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Like it's a bunch of old stuff, a bunch of new stuff. But it's all GW. And this new stuff, I want to I want to paint different sculpts. I want to make it look different. That's such a cool idea. Yeah, I love yeah. it. So it'll be fun. And uh, uh, see, so don't don't worry, Tayrathi's gonna be around. <laughs> uh, but I'll have, uh, I'll have two more pop queens leading this army. Okay. Yeah. Dua Lipa and Ava Max. Of course. <laughs> Very nice. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be fun. But. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm also on Twitter, strengthhammer underscore, but, you know, definitely follow me, strengthhammer underscore on Instagram as well, and Alex is here as fit underscore hammer. Um, we'll probably have him back on the show to talk more fitness stuff, too. Uh, I, I, actually, that's the other thing. Like, while we're here, this is just extra content now, because you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're a captive uh, interviewee. Yeah, I guess. I, I can't escape. Yeah, so so Matt, Matt Hayward, uh, co-host of the show, He's doing Big M's Power Hour, which is awesome. It's like, Love it. it's super in depth uh, into rules, not just Age of Sigma, he touches 40k too, um, which is great. And <laughs> it's funny, he's, he's now with uh, Cole McGinnigal from our local club uh, to, to be a part of it because I, I, I told Matt he could see. I'm like, Matt, I, I don't care about, <laughs> I don't care about these topics. Like, I, I can't talk about them because they're not passion for me. It's not that I don't want it. Like, obviously, like, yeah, sure, whatever, talk about it, whatever you want. But, I, I just don't like like Warhammer Weekly. I love Warhammer Weekly, but whenever the show comes on and it's about fixing this army, I'm just like, I don't I don't like good content. I don't care. Right. <laughs> like just just play the game, have fun. That's that's where my mindset is. But like I know people appreciate it. But I've also been trying to figure out what to do with this main podcast because I kind of want to do more fitness. So I, I need to see like what the what the level is with like you know Matt Neil and. And How should they are, yeah. Yeah, and like, like guys, I, I kind of want to talk a lot more fitness on this show than we have been, instead of like reviewing GW stuff, because we can do that on, you know, Matt's show. Right. So, just that, and I say this just as a heads up, like, there may be change in the near future for the podcast format. Um, also, I, I kind of like at the point, like, if we're just talking about fitness, like, do we need to have the video for the for the strength hammer portion? Like, do I, can we just record oh, so audio? Flex, right? It's true. We have to prove that we lift. I mean, come on. Well, that's that's why you follow us on Instagram at <laughs> strengthhammer <laughs> underscore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just that. Don't look me up. Yeah, but just look up Chuck. But like I said, I mean, depending on how things go and like the interest of the other guys, um, like you know, you might see Alex on more because Alex is as big into fitness as I am. Whereas you know, not everybody is, and I get that, and that's right. that's fine. I don't want to force someone to like Matt's not forcing me to be on his show talking about stuff that I have no passion about. So I'm not going to force anyone else to do that. Uh, unless they're trapped in a car, <laughs> driving back from doing Murph, and they have to talk about Help me. He's fine. He's fine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I said hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll uh, get uh, the other guys on to talk about some other stuff too in this show, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this little Murph before and after. Um, yeah, I'll uh, catch you all later. Anything you want to say, Alex? Uh, stay strong. Yep, stay strong and get stronger, everybody. Don't steal my